Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Rex Finance and today we're going to talk about my $5,000 Robinhood stock portfolio. I hope everyone that watches my videos has had a great few days since I last saw you. My life has been hectic, that's why I did not get a video out on Wednesday, but I apologize. That won't happen very often, but I won't guarantee it won't ever happen. And just, I want to say a massive thank you to all you guys for the support on all of my videos across my channel. It's been insane. If you guys are new or returning here and not yet subscribed make sure you guys hit that subscribe button also make sure you guys go check out my channel and watch all the videos you haven't watched or videos that interest you that ha you haven't watched yet so because this is a pretty important milestone video for me the five thousand dollars I have invested at the age of 19 I should probably preface this whole video with a little background about myself so yes I'm 19 years old I just turned 19 15 days ago so I'm really an 18 year old in 15 days I don't know if that's how that works. <laughs> but I'm attending the University of Nebraska currently. I just completed my freshman year of college and I'm pursuing a major in finance and a minor in accounting. Now, I've been investing since I was 16 years old. I got interested in investing in high school. My I think that would be my junior or sophomore year. My business teacher hosted a virtual stock market competition every semester and I would join them and I would kick some butt in them and I even set a record. I turned $100,000 into $140,000 in about six weeks and it was a new record at my school. So that was really awesome and it still hasn't been beaten. In fact, I still keep in contact with my business teacher because he's a big investor like me. He's been a big mentor in my life. So you might be wondering, what was my first stock? What did I invest in? What was the first stock that I bought? Well, that answer is Chesapeake Energy, and I threw $100 into that company, and I lost all 100 of them, and I lost even more money because I averaged down on that position, and as you guys know, Chesapeake Energy is about to go bankrupt, so I actually have lost a, a bit of money on that company, but it's taught me to be patient and not try and go for a quick buck. I knew nothing about the company when I invested in them. I, had, I knew nothing about the amount of debt on their balance sheet. I didn't even know to look at their balance sheet before I invested in the company, which is also part of the reason why I only own two companies currently. Now, that might be a little concerning to a few of you that are watching this video, but I would way rather hold and own two companies that I know top to bottom than a bunch of different companies that I don't know a whole lot about that would limit my return. By only owning two companies, I can really maximize my potential return, especially because I know where these companies are headed and I can further invest more increased capital into those two companies rather than diversifying it into 10 to 20 different companies and limiting my upside. Now, yes, it's a little more risky to only own a few companies, but really, like I said, I know the two companies I, I own very, very well. So that limits my risk and the risk that's there I'm willing to accept. And because of that, diversification leads to smaller return on investment if you know what you're doing. I'm not saying I know what I'm doing, but I know the companies that I'm investing in. I'm happy with where my money's at. So that makes me curious. How many stocks do you guys own? Let me know in the comments section down below how many companies you guys currently own. I would love to know that. I reply to every single comment, so make sure you comment. So today, we're going to talk about my current portfolio and the, go a little bit in depth in the two companies I do hold and own currently, and then I'm going to be going into some companies I'm looking at investing in very, very soon. So I own two companies currently, as you can see behind me, and that I've said millions of times in this video already. And those, the value of those two holdings is $5,271.88. I had a pretty good day today. Revolve Group was up massively again today. It's a great stock. It's one of my favorite companies I own. Obviously, I only own two companies, and I love them both. So first, let's just dive into Revolve Group, the first company. I did an entire video on this company that went into a lot of detail, probably more detail that I'm going to go into in this video. So if you guys want to check that out, go to either go to my channel or click on the card above me. Revolve Group is an online retailer. It's an online store. They were featured in the TV show The Bachelor, which got a lot of people buying their inventory from them and increased their sales drastically. Over the past five or so years, this company has increased their sales, increased their revenues, increased their net incomes, and most importantly, they had no debt on their balance sheet until this 
virus situation. And they still only have $30 million drawn down on their credit revolver and over $100 million in cash. So I am not concerned whatsoever and I still really like the where this company's at currently. They recently reported their earnings and it kicked some butt like I figured it would. It bounced up a ton. As you can see over the past month, it's up 35%. I'll take a 35% return anytime. And in fact, I've actually averaged up on this position, which I rarely ever do. So my first initial buys were kind of down in the tens. And then I started buying as the stock has climbed up because this stock should be valued between $40 and $50 in my opinion. And it's not going to take long for it to get back to those levels. So, so far I have a 12 0.15% return on this company, which is great because I've only owned them for, you know, a month or two. And the markets usually only average, you know, 10 to 12% if you're lucky every year. So I'm already beating the markets in my first two months of owning this company. I believe there's still a bunch of upside to this company. And as you can see behind me, they even sell face masks. What does this company not sell when it comes to retail clothing? These face masks, I mean, if I hover over this, they match the outfits. Like, what? And people are willing to pay $25, $30, $40 for these face masks, and most of them are sold out. That's just insane to me. Why would anybody buy a $40 face mask? But I'm also not a woman, and this company really attracts women and advertises towards women. So... This company sells so many items, so many clothing, so many dresses, so many shoes, so many accessories, etc. They use models, Instagram models, and different influencers to advertise for them. And man, it it it's a great advertising strategy. Way better than advertising on the radio or TV. Social media advertising and online advertising is just the future and it has shown with this business increasing their sales year over year. So you may be wondering, when will I sell this company? So I mentioned I believe this company should be valued between $40 and $50 currently. So I am not going to sell my, the bulk of my position until we get to the $42, $43, $45 dollar levels. However, I do own 50 shares that I am swinging, meaning I swing the ups and downs of this company, or at least I try to, to make a little more money so I can buy more shares for the long run in this company. So I own 50 shares, like I mentioned. I will be selling those 50 shares that I'm swinging. Once this company, you know, is around $18, $20, I'll probably sell those 50 shares and then buy back in lower if we see another, kind of another hitch in this stock. However, like I said, I won't be selling the bulk of my position until it is at those $40 to $50 levels again, because that's where this company should be. It's plain and simple. So the second company I own that I'm gonna talk about today is Workhorse. Ticker symbol WKHS, and I believe in the long-term prospects of this company so much. This company IPO'd in late 2015, and as you can see, its stock has kind of struggled a little bit over time. However, there's such a bullish case for this company, and I go into great detail in this video right here. There'll be a, a card up there as well to click on if you wanna go watch the video I do on this company in particular, if you want to hear the entire bullish case, but I'll just be highlighting over those bullish cases in this video. But if you want greater detail, like I said, go check out that video. <clears throat> so this is actually a recent company that I purchased. I own 1,435 shares of this company with a cost basis of $2.88. Now the stock is down to $2.64. I actually bought some a few days ago when it was worth about $2.50. This company is gonna be worth a bunch in the near future. And if they're not worth a bunch, they're gonna be bought out by a big company like Amazon. So I know I'm 99.999% I'm certain this company is gonna be worth more in one to three years than it is currently because of how much of an upside this company has. However, as you can see, I've lost 8% on this company so far, but I have no problem with that because I just started opening my position. And honestly, guys, I'm really comfortable buying this company anywhere below $5 because this is gonna be a $20 dollar to a $30 stock in the next two years and it's going to be a hundred dollar stock if it doesn't get bought out by then in the next five to ten years. This company has so much upside to it. So before I talk about any more, I should probably inform you guys what this company does. 
They manufacture electric delivery vans and delivery drones. They have several patents that protect their technology, including one that prohibits any other business to, to manufacture a van that has capabilities to launch a drone from the top of a delivery van. Now that is big because if another company wants to do this, they're gonna have to pay Workhorse a bunch of money to be able to do that because of their patent. They have about seven current patents and they have three or four more pending currently. In addition to that, they have a potential $6.3 billion contract deal coming with USPS, United States Postal Service. This would be absolutely massive for this company. The only bearish case that I can think of is that this company has no meaningful revenues. And that is explained because they recently transitioned to a new series of model of their delivery vans and their delivery drone. They focused all of their attention on the next series and improving their current models. So they stopped selling the old models completely. Now, they're, they plan to start selling these models this year, at the end of this year. This last quarter, this last earnings report was the last earnings report where there won't be any revenue on the balance sheet. And this company has so many partnerships and pre-orders and backlog for their vehicles. Their customers include UPS, FedEx, DHL, etc. In addition to that, they'll sell their vehicles in their rider systems. Also, they have a partnership with MOOG Moog for military applications of a drone that they sold Moog. In addition to that, they help deliver medical test kits and supplies with a partnership with USOG. Also, they own 10% of Lordstown Motors Company. This company is going to beat Tesla to the market with their electric vehicle truck. This truck looks awesome. I'll throw a picture on the screen right there. It looks so much better compared to that stupid cyber truck. I have no issues with Tesla, but I'm just informing you guys that this company, Lordstown Motor Company, is going to beat Tesla to the market with this electric vehicle truck, and it looks a lot better, and it is very, very powerful. Workhorse owns 10% of that company, and Lordstown owes them a royalty fee on every single truck they sell because Workhorse sold Lordstown their technology for this electric vehicle truck. In fact, Workhorse's old CEO is actually the CEO of Lordstown Motor Company, which purchased the old GM manufacturing facility. So that concludes my overview of the two companies that I currently hold and own. Again, if you want more detail on those two companies, go check out these two videos. There were cards earlier in the video and there'll also be links down in the description. If you don't see them there, go to my channel and click on those videos. They'll be easy to find. So next, let's dive into my watch list. Companies that I'm watching currently. The first company that I'm watching is Sirius XM. This is a company I've been in and out of even as I've rebooted my YouTube channel not long ago. They've recently seen another downturn in their company and luckily I sold out before that massive downturn. I figured I could put my money from Sirius XM into a better investment with better return on investment potential. However, if this company gets down in the $4 per share, it's gonna be a bargain and I'm gonna be investing in their company again. Sirius XM owns Pandora and they have a minority stake in SoundCloud and SoundCloud is the next big thing. I think all of you guys know that, especially if you're my age or just a little bit older, SoundCloud's SoundCloud is huge for up and coming rappers, people that just want to be the next musician star. And I believe that SiriusXM will eventually 100% overtake SoundCloud and buy their company, which would absolutely explode the stock price. Next we have the company Stitch Fix. This is also another online retail company like Revolve, which is why I like the company. I talked about this stock in my three stocks to buy May 2020 edition video. And if you guys invested in this, you've already returned about 45% on that initial investment. So I hope some of you guys got involved with this company when I recommended it. I unfortunately did not buy any shares at that time, but it has been a very successful stock. Next is a little known company called Eros International. This is another speculative play that I haven't really entirely sold myself on. I could see myself investing this in the near future, especially if it gets down into the $2 a share levels again. They're completing their merger with STX Entertainment in sometime in June, and that combined company is gonna be very powerful. It's gonna be the next Netflix, lots of subscriber growth every single quarter, so that's why I'm interested in this company. Next on my watch list is actually the company that I bought in my dad's portfolio called Frontline. This is a oil tanker company, and it has also seen a massive upturn in its share price recently. 
as you can see on the week chart, it's up about 3% this week and it's been up crazy. And they recently increased their dividend to 70 cents per share, which is insane. That yield is crazy. And there's no risk that you won't get that dividend yield because the tankers are doing so successfully right now. So that's why I like that company. Next on my watch list is a company called Virgin Galactic Holdings. I also did an entire video on this company. So if you guys want to go see that, go check out my channel and find that video. I really, really would like to buy this company if it ever dips to around $10 a share. There's too much speculation and down potential downside with this company, so I don't really want to invest in them currently, but if they ever got down to that $10 a share level, I would gladly throw some money in. They focus on space tourism, which is really cool, which is why I like this company. Next is Raytheon Technologies. This is actually com another company I recommend to buy in the three dividend stocks to buy May 2020 edition. So that's another video you guys you can go check out on my channel. This company has seen a massive downturn. It should be valued above $100 per share in my opinion. It's another company I've been in and out of. I, I wasn't happy with the slow return on my money, so I, I sold out of my position here, but I wouldn't be I wouldn't have a problem throwing more money in in the near future. This is a defense company, and with the economies in the tank around the world, tensions are just are itching to rise between countries and economies. So that's why I really like this company. Next, we have a beauty products manufacturer. This company was up huge today, almost over 15% counting after hours and 10% over the last week. I was looking at getting into this company when it was in the low threes, but now I'm not so much interested in it. They had a blow away earnings report, which is why I also have another beauty products company on my watch list, which I'll talk about in a little bit. This is a company called Funware. This is a recent watch list ad of mine because you guys might not know, but the hospital systems for filing information, all of that stuff is just such a mess. And Funware's focus is moving all of that online in a mobile way to make it easily accessible, easily organized, all that stuff. It would be huge if they could push this into all hospitals. So I really like the future of this company. I need to do more research before I buy any shares though. Lastly on my watch list is Ulta Beauty. They report earnings on May 28th, which is next week, which is why I'm looking at investing in this company. Elf Beauty and Coty both had blow away earnings, which makes me think that Ulta Beauty is not going to disappoint either. For some reason, the beauty products have thrived in this recession, and I think Ulta Beauty is no exception here. I'm going to buy some shares early next week, more than likely, just because I think they're going to beat earnings in a massive way, and I believe I can make some money on this company over the next couple of weeks. So with that, guys, that's all I had for you today. If you like this video, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, leave a like down below, and make sure you guys go check out the two standalone videos I did on Workhorse and Revolve Group. Those two videos were awesome. I think you guys would really enjoy those videos, especially if you want more detail on those companies that I own. With that, have a great weekend. I will see you guys on Monday. Peace out.